morning. Good morning. Should be fun. I'm a mess already. <laughs> On, I think it was Monday morning, Sunday night or Monday morning, I felt like God was saying this week to preach on say yes, giving him our total yes. And as I was just kind of looking around the room, when I walked in this morning and as I looked up at the worship team, I just saw so many people who have said yes. Um, Zoe <laughs> moved ac literally across the country and found our church and I've just seen such courage and bravery. I don't know where she went, but um, from you, Zoe, I'm so proud of you. She, uh, yeah, she's just yeah. saying yes. Like, uh, like God told her to, to quit her job and move closer here, and she did it without another job and and another place to stay. And I'm sorry, Zoe, I have not asked your permission to do this, but here we go. Um, and in a time when most of people would most people would be panicking because she had very few she it was her last ever job and uh, she didn't have anywhere to go stay and most people would be panicking and she felt like God said just don't even look I don't want you to look for a place to stay I don't want you to look for a job I just want you to rest in me and I want you to fast for three days and she she did that and I'm just um, so proud and I just see like God moving and I feel like I said this to her the other day like I feel like this is laying the foundation for the rest of your life. Yeah. 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 And then I look at, you know, around the room at other, other people, and I, um, Kathy Will, I remember several years ago um, getting the call that the gym had had a stroke. And uh, it was one of the hardest things I've ever been part of. And I just watched as Kathy just stepped into yes. And she just said, God, whatever, whatever. Whatever you're going to do, I'm, I'm all in. And she never lost sight of Jesus. She never lost sight. And she has been by Jim's side every day. Yeah. And she has never lost her faith. She has just continued to say yes to Jesus. I could go on and on and on with stories. Um, I'll tell you one more. Also did not get permission can all yell at me later. My email is um, Cody at LimitlessChurchCA.com. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how long ago it was. It was only a few months ago that we first met Darren, and uh, he ended up in a, a little meeting we were having about recovery, and he's like, I just don't fully know yet if Jesus is the way. And now he's like, Jesus is the way, let's go. And it's just like the, I go to Darren all the time and I'm like, dude, you are our Jesus people guy. Like, you are our Lonnie Frisbee, but way healthier, let's go. Um, and then I think of the fact that Tim's yes to, to invite Darren. And like the, uh, guys, our yes. Our yes to God will transform the world. Our yes, to, our yes to him, and I mean it in every area. I don't just mean like, yes, Jesus, I believe you and I'll follow you. I mean like, you're all in yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not like I'll go to church on Sundays, yes, but your yes. You want me to do that with my bank account? I will. <laughs> yes, you want me to stop doing that? Absolutely. Just trusting him with everything you are. Knowing Absolutely. that your yes to him is going to impact not only your life, but generations. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. But if your yes in every area, in your, your yes in your words, your yes in your actions, your yes in your relationships, your yes to him when you go, I know what I want to do, but I'm going to stop yep. and I'm going to first ask him, yes. what do you want for me? Yes. Yes. Right? We say yes to him in every single area, whether it makes us look amazing or makes us look like an idiot. We say yes, and we've had both. 
Amen. More the idiot part, but it's fine. We're getting to the amazing. I was, I've been thinking about this a lot since we did Explore Limitless every, um, every few months. And we're going to do one again soon because I think we need another one. But um, every few months we do something called Explore Limitless, which is just a lunch after church where you can come meet some of our leaders. You can hear about the church and what we're doing. And you can see, you know, is this a place for you? Um, and then we can also obviously get to know you and you can plug in. And so at our last Explore Limitless, I was just struck by several times as people at the beginning just go and kind of share how they got here and some of our leaders share a little bit about themselves and how they got here. And I kept hearing this theme of we've given our yes to him. We've given our yes to him. And people are saying, you know, I said yes and, and stepped in. Or, or people are talking about, you know, the leadership saying yes even when the vision looks crazy, right? And so that, that just really hit me, but it also hit me that the truth is that being part of this family, you can sit on the sidelines, but if you want to get in the game, you're going to have to say a lot of yeses to him. You're going to have to say yes to healing, because a lot of us want to jump in the game, like a lot of us want to get in and be like, okay, Jesus, what are you doing? Let's go. Let's do the fun stuff, right? But then before we get there, he's going, hey, that's awesome, super excited to use your gifts, but can we first like deal with this pain over here that you've been ignoring? Because it's, yeah. it's gonna bleed on people, yeah. right? Can, can we first go deal with like this thing from your past that you just can't seem to let go of yet? Can we deal with this little area of your life where you're going like, well, I know God says I'm amazing, but I think I'm trash. And he's going like, will you say yes to all of those areas too? Is this a little bit like, Echoey, boomy, can we bring it down a bit? Sorry. That's, okay. Um, so, so if you want to get in the game, it's going to require a lot of yeses. And I think sometimes we love what Jesus offers us, all the good stuff, but then when it comes to like the more painful things, like the things where we have to kind of dig up some junk and figure out why we're doing the things we're doing and actually realize what's in there. Or sometimes when it's like, oh, but this requires some discipline, like he actually wants us to get into the word. He wants us to read his word because it's his word to us written down, right? He wants us to do that. He wants us to take time out. He wants us to rest. Some of us just like to keep go, 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 go. And he's like, rest. And I'm like, I don't want it. And he's like, do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So we, we, ha we have to be willing to say yes all in. We have to even be willing to say, hey, and this is something I really feel like is on it. I've, I've mentioned it before, but I really feel like God's on this in, the, in, in this particular place, but actually probably throughout the world. Um, and that's that we need to say yes to deliverance. Yes. Like we need to say yes to Let's stop making deliverance weird, yeah. right? Like, let's yeah. stop. Like, yeah. Jesus did it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, what was it? was one third of Jesus' miracles were deliverance? Yeah. One third. Zach and Vanessa taught us that um, if you join a discipleship journey group, yeah. you'll get to hear more about this. But he was teaching the leadership that one third of Jesus' miracles were deliverance, people. Yeah. Come on. And now we are going, like, oh, that's weird. Let's just keep our demons. <laughs> like you guys like sometimes it's from our past sometimes I mean there's a story I'm going to read today about a, a woman who comes and her little girl is demon possessed like junk can happen to us when we're little the devil yeah. is a jerk yeah. Yeah. he is yeah. not he's not standing back going oh wait till they're 18 it's cool like he, <laughs> right so we need to realize that there's junk that comes in our kids that we need to pray off of them yeah. there's junk that comes yeah. in when people say stuff about us right. Yeah. right there's all this junk and we need to not make it weird we just need to go and go okay god i know that in you you bring part of your salvation package the benefits package of being your child is that i get healing and, and salvation and deliverance That's right. like yeah. the enemy cannot have a place in your life anymore That's right. Yeah. unless you let him Right. Unless you say, oh, I'd rather stay calm over here in the corner. Some of you guys, who I was not planning on going here. He, let's, I'm like on set these two. All right. Do it. <laughs> Some of you have been dealing with like, and I'm not saying this is always demons, but I am saying it's quite possibly, probably 
has something to do with this. But some, some of you have been dealing with anger, like a rage that comes over you and you're like, I don't feel like that's who I am. Maybe it's not who you are. Some of you have been going into like the deep depths of despair and that's not who you are. I'm not saying there's not other factors or whatever, but like there are things that we sometimes deal with and the world has made it very normal. Yes. Yeah. Like the, nor the world has made it like, you know, okay, it's all right, everybody deals with anxiety. Everybody deals with, everybody deals with anger. Everybody deals with whatever, fill in the blank. And we have chosen to step in to the world who is still under the influence of the devil and go, oh, let's trust them. That's a good idea. <laughs> Instead of going, oh, maybe I'm dealing with something here that Jesus actually has a solution for. Right. I'm not saying it's as simple as just pray it off and it's gone. Sometimes it's not that simple, believe me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can I just suggest to you maybe part of your yes to him today is going to be to say, hey, when stuff comes up and I'm like, that doesn't feel right, I'm going to ask somebody to pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take it to the word and see if Jesus has an answer for it. Right? No. All right. Come on. Come on. All right. So with this whole theme of say yes, I went to the, the most um, popular yes verse, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of context here. It actually starts because Paul, this guy Paul, amazing guy, check him out in the Bible. Um, he's, he's had a crazy deliverance story, like crazy transformation story. And he's writing, he's now pretty much the father of a lot of these churches, and he writes to a church that they started in a place called Corinth. And so he writes, this is the second letter that he writes to them, and as you kind of read the context of it, what's happened is he was supposed to, Paul and some of his people were supposed to go visit them, and they don't. That's kind of what you pick up as you read the letter. And so some people are like kind of grumbling, like, Paul, you said you'd come and you didn't show up. And so this is kind of where we pick up here. And so we're going to get there, but there's, there's a whole lot here that I just felt like God wanted us to look at. So looking at verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 18. As surely as God is faithful, sorry, as surely as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one who Silas, Timothy, and I preach to you. And as God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. I love that. As God's ultimate yes, Jesus always does what he says. Verse 20, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. It is God who enables us, along with you, to stand firm in Christ. He has commissioned us, and he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. I want you first just to look at that last, those last two verses. It is God who enables us. So I'm going to first talk about our yes to others, like just our yes as being, being people to, to others and to God who are just trustworthy, because that's really important to be trustworthy, because we are made in his image and he is trustworthy, right? And so right here, though, it says it is God who enables us, along with you all, to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us, and he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised. So when we look at this and we go, I feel like it's impossible to say yes to God in every area. I feel like it's so scary because what if he calls me to go do something and I don't want to do it? And sometimes that something is as simple as like, hey, walk up to that person and say, you know, Jesus loves you or invite them to church. And we're going, ah, that's terrifying. But this scripture should give us so much confidence because it's not us. 
He enables us. His Holy Spirit is in us and seals us. His Holy Spirit is the first installment, meaning there are many other installments. Praise Jesus for everything that he has promised. We need to give our yes to people, to other people. I love how Paul goes, I didn't say yes and no, right? And he goes on and he explains the situation and he basically explains to them that the reason he couldn't come was for their own good because remember at the time they're in the persecuted church. So he's not going, I'm, just, I'm not just flippant, right? I'm truly following the Holy Spirit and doing things for your good. And we need to have that same perspective, that same determination with other people. Let our yes be yes and our no be no. I love that scripture too. Let our yes be yes and our no be no. Let's be people who are trustworthy. But this is so funny. As he's like saying like, like my, my yes wasn't no and my no wasn't yes. And he's like, it was reminding me of, this is just a silly side note, but in South Africa, anybody ever been to South Africa? So South Africans um, are funny and they have their own vocabulary. And if you're not South African, it's sometimes hard to figure out. For example, the word now doesn't actually mean like now. So the word now might mean something like, yeah, possibly soon, maybe, if I feel like it. <laughs> then the word, the word right now is a little more like, yeah, OK, probably now, I think. Uh, but it's a little more like, a, like if, you're, if your parent has like, like a, a mother or father tone of like, right now. But then also, you know, maybe not. <laughs> but then these are my favorite. South Africans, when you say now, 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 like you would think if you're repeating it, it would be like now, but now, now means a little bit later. <laughs> like soon, soon, I'm not kidding. You could look this up, it's on the internet. Um, <laughs> you could ask any other South African too here. Now, now means like soon, but not, not right now, like n later. And then just now, now just, just now means like way later, if at all. <laughs> so I'll do that, like if you're here, I'll do that just now. I'm probably not gonna do it. <laughs> or if I do, it'll be like in several hours or days, right? So I just think this is funny, because it's the same, I feel like, it's a joke, but I feel like sometimes as humans, we've gotten this way with each other. And we say yes to each other, but then we don't. And I feel like our society has become one that really lacks loyalty and trust. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm saying this to myself, I got deeply convicted about something, I've gotten convicted about it before, but obviously not deeply enough, so Lord help me with this one. But I got convicted by the fact that sometimes I say yes, and then like I get too busy, right? Or I say yes, let's meet at this time, and then 20 minutes later, we're not meeting yet because I was at another meeting that ran too late and then I feel bad leaving them, so then I'm at another, and then my next meeting, this happened to me two days ago, like, and my next meeting, I'm late to the to start, so then I don't wanna leave, you know, so I wanna stay longer, and so then I'm late to the next meeting, and, to the, and I got so convicted by this, and I think the truth is we can blow stuff like this off, but I, I wanna say I really feel, and I don't, you know, we're not gonna micromanage and be weird or whatever, so if I'm ever late to another staff meeting, please don't kill me, um, but, I really think there's something on this, yes. that we need to be people who can be trusted. Because right. I think about my kids, like if I say something and then I don't do it, they remember. Yeah. And then they start to question other things about me. And I think that sometimes the world can do that with Christians. They go, yeah, but Christians are just kind of flaky. Like they're just not really... And so I, I just want to encourage us. This is just like a little side thing, but I really just want to encourage us to keep our promises, to be reliable, to keep a tight rein on our tongue. Yes. So the people trust that when they're not in the room, you're not saying something bad about them. Yes. Right? Paul explains that he wasn't just being flaky. And he goes to, I mean, there's a, there's a lot more than what I read. He like goes on for a while about this because he really wants people to trust him. And he's going, I was not being flippant with you. And I think we as believers, if you, have, if you call yourself a Christian, I want to encourage you to be a person that can be trusted. That when you say you'll do something, you'll do it. 
that people don't have to come back and go, oh, but what about that thing? Right? And this is me too, absolutely, 100%. But with Paul, he, he says to them, like, this, I was doing it for your own good. But the amazing thing about Paul that you'll start to notice in all of the disciples and, and throughout Scripture is people are first and foremost spirit-led. And, and we don't do that as, a, and as a, an excuse. Well, the, the Holy Spirit told me to do this, and then he told me to do this. Yeah, the Holy Spirit doesn't work like that, right? So we need to be very clear on what we hear. But I just think it's so amazing and it's so important that we, we need to be people that that everyone can trust that we will listen to God. That like Jesus said, I don't do anything except what I see the Father doing. Yeah. You guys are awfully quiet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little convicting. I feel it too. I, I read a... Um, I, so I think it's really important that when we give our yes, we are always giving that yes in response to the Holy Spirit. Right? And when he tells us to pivot, we only pivot when he tells us to. Right? Because I think that's it. It's like if we give our yes to people and then God says, that's not the yes I told you to do, then we need to be willing to pivot for God. Right? right. But, but that's why it's so important that we ask first, that we ask him first what he's doing. I remember reading a, a book in college, and it's, I don't remember very much of what it said inside of it, but the title like, changed my life. The title was, When People Are Big and God is Small. And that actually got me on this journey where, you guys have heard it before, like I, I was terrified, terrified to speak. I was terrified to like open my mouth. I'm still really reserved and really shy. That hasn't changed, but I'm no longer afraid. And so I think it's really important that we remember that we need to keep God big and people small. We need to keep what we say to him big and we need to always our responses our yes and our no to people always needs to be a response to our yes to him yeah. Yeah. does that make sense yes. okay i want to read to you just right before this this part paul talks in uh first corinthians sorry second corinthians chapter one verse nine and he talks about this time where they, they thought they were going to die. They've gone through all these hard things and they thought they were going to die. And then it says this, but as a result, I love this, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and we learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. Yeah. Right? The God who can raise the dead is the one who we can rely on. Yeah. Like he is the one that we can trust. And then it says, and he did rescue us from mortal danger and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us, yeah. right? This is the kind of confidence we have, and this is the reason why we can say yes to God. And this is the main part of what I want to talk about today, is that when we give our yes to Jesus, it's because we can trust him. Yeah. Yeah, it's because he is the kind of God who rescues us. It's because he's the kind of God that we can have confidence in that no matter what, when we say yes to him, it will always turn out better for us. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that life will be easy, but it will be better. Yeah. It doesn't mean that everything's going to go smoothly all the time, but it does mean that his purposes will prevail. Come on. Right. And his purposes are always eternal, yeah. while sometimes ours are just very, very temporary. But he's always looking at what we can do with him. I love the fact that in the scripture it says, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with the resounding yes. Yeah. Right? We just sang that song. All your promises are yes and amen. As you read through scripture, all of the, the Old Testament filled with God's old covenants are all fulfilled. All of them. Hallelujah. Fulfilled in Jesus right? Every single one. And so as we look at that, we look, we can look at the word and we can go, what promises did he make? He promised people like Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, right? And we can take that promise and know that is us because we are grafted in. That, that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. We can know with confidence that, that he, that we can actually fulfill the mission that he gave us to subdue the earth. Yeah. 
So no matter what havoc the enemy is having out, no matter what chaos surrounds, we can know that we can have the victory, right? Because Jesus, all the promises are yes in him. We can know that no matter how we feel about ourselves, that if we would just step into what he says about us, all of that is true. We are royalty. We are children. We are free. We are not slaves to sin anymore, right? That we can actually step into these realities. Come on. That, that all curses are broken. And sometimes the enemy likes to convince us that they're not broken. But we can actually, they are still maybe happening in our lives because the same way, I said this on Wednesday night, the same way that we have to for our salvation, do you guys know that at the cross, Jesus already won your salvation? At the cross, he literally takes on all your sin and he, he puts his arms out and, and offers you salvation. And 2,000 years later, you can choose to either stay in your sin and your lostness and your depravity, or you can choose to go, I'm reaching back and I'm grabbing what he already offered me. That's right. yeah. All your sins are already forgiven, even the ones you haven't committed yet. Yeah. You could do yourself a favor, don't commit them. But anyway, <laughs> all of them are already forgiven yeah. before you did them. Yeah. He yeah. forgave them before you were born. But now, 2,000 years later, we get to reach back and say, I receive that forgiveness. Right. Or we can live in our condemnation. And in the same way, the same way every curse was broken at the cross. But the enemy does a really good job of still trying to hang those curses over us. And we can instead go, no, I break every generational curse over my family. Yep every curse that is spoken and words that people speak over me, every sin, every sin that opens a gate. Mm -hmm. You guys know that? Every time you step into sin, you're opening a gate for the enemy to come and get a foothold in your life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And every time you do that, you can say, I close that gate, I receive my forgiveness, and now I break any curse that came in through that gate. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. And so we get to stand in that. We get to stand in everything he offers us. We give him our full yes. Everything, everything is fulfilled in Jesus. Every yes, every promise is fulfilled in him. 3 John chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 in the English Standard Version translation says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. I want to pause there for a second. It says, I pray that all will go well with you and you will be in good physical health as, as your soul. In, in the ESV, it actually talks about the, um, I think I wrote the wrong one down. It actually talks about your soul prospers, right? So as your soul prospers, everything else will flow out of that. Yeah. How does your soul prosper? Yes. By saying yes to Jesus. By saying yes to him. When you step into that yes with him, when you give a resounding yes to him, everything else will flow out of that prosperous soul that we have when we step into our yes with him. And then it says, right after, so it says, as your soul prospers, for I rejoiced greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth. As indeed you are walking in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. Truth and trust work together. So when we choose to step into, our, in, into truth, it's because we know he's trustworthy, yeah. right? Yeah. And we choose to say yes when we realize, wow, he's trustworthy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Paul right here, or uh, John right here is commending them that they have actually chosen to walk in his truth, to walk in God's truth rather than their own. Yeah. Rather than I think this is right. Instead, what does God say? Yeah. And when they step into that truth, that's when he's saying this is a total response. I see that you're walking in truth and that is why your soul is prospering yeah. and because your soul is prospering you everything is going well with you and you are in good health does this make sense yeah. so I know that for us these type of things can be really confusing because we're like yeah but I don't I don't see it 
but the Bible says it. And so we choose to believe it. And I promise you, if you start to walk in more of what this says, it may not happen instantly because he is not a genie in a bottle and you go, okay, I read it, I believe it, God, let's go. He's like, really? But do you? But do you? He knows our hearts, right? So we need to walk in it with him. Okay, I want to just unpack a little bit for you guys that scripture that we read. For all of God's promises have been filled in Christ with the resounding yes. As I look up that word yes, it means yes. <laughs> it, mean, it really does. It means just yes. It means absolute, assuredly, 100%. Yes. yes. You can have confidence in this. So Jesus is the ultimate assurance, the ultimate yes, 100% confident in him, the truth. But then I dug into this word amen, because then it says, and through Christ, our amen. Vernon, where are you? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> through Christ, our amen ascends to God for his glory. Now, right here, it just says, amen means yes. But, oh man, it means a lot more than that. I want you guys to, to look. This is the, um, as you, you dive into the actual definition in Strong's, it says, at the beginning of a discourse, it means surely, truly, or the truth. So as at the beginning of somebody speaking, they would maybe say amen because they're like, we trust what they're going to say. So it's giving confidence in the person who's about to speak. And then this, it says, at the end, so it is, so be it. May it be fulfilled. I love this. It was a custom which passed over from synagogues to the Christian assemblies that when he who had read or discoursed had offered up solemn prayer to God, the others responded, amen. And get this part, guys. They responded, amen. And thus made the substance of what was being uttered their own. So when we say amen, it is not just like, oh, that was nice. Yes, good. It's like, I hear what you just said, and I'm going to make it my own. Right? And that is the point. That is the point of our yes. Our yes should move us. Our yes should actually impact us. It should not be yes Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, because guess what? If you call him Lord, yes, it's easy to call him Savior because he saved us out of our sin and he saves us for eternity. But when you call him Lord and Savior, suddenly he is Lord over your life. Yep. And that means he gets to be Lord over every part of your life. And suddenly when we go amen to that, we're going, let all of that be true in my life that it'll actually impact the way I speak, the way I move, the decisions I make, what I do with every part of my life. It says the word amen is the most remarkable word. It actually talks about how this word amen is transliterated into almost every other language. It's one of the most, it's probably, they say, the most common word in the whole earth. Because instead of it being translated into other languages, it, they just use the same word. That's how powerful it is. Wow. It's incredible. So, so it actually came to be, and then it says, the word is so identical that it's actually really, the Hebrew word, it's almost exactly the same as the Hebrew word for believe or faithful. So to say amen, it's like, I believe that with everything in me. I put my faith in that. I trust what he says. And this, is so, this, this word, amen, is actually a word that we are giving in response. And it says that that word ascends to God for his glory. That when we say, I hear what you say, and I say, yes, I say, amen, that ascends to God for his glory. As though he needs us, but he chooses to be glorified by us. Like that blows my mind. I want to just read to you guys a couple things in Hebrews chapter 11. And they've, they've already gone on and they've talked about all like the, the, big, the big guns of faith. And then he says, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. And then listen to this. By faith. It was their faith. Listen to what their faith accomplished. 
By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched the flames of fire. They escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. How many of you guys need your weakness to be turned to strength? They became strong in battle, and they put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. It's, in other translations, it talks about people being raised from the dead. These people, their faith, their yes to God, their I believe you. That's what faith is, right? It's I believe you. I give you my yes. I give you my amen. Let that be mine. Look at what it accomplishes. It shuts the mouths of lions who these were hungry lions. They didn't just eat lunch. Like Daniel gets thrown in and they would purposely starve these lions so that they would just like, it's horrific. And yet their faith, Daniel's faith, shut the mouths of lions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not our alpacas, the other guys, they <laughs> literally get thrown into a fire and they are dancing with Jesus. Like it talks about the angel of the Lord who is Jesus in there with them and they don't even, like not a hair on their head is scorched. Mm -hmm. Come on, like this is what faith does. Yeah. This is what faith does. And you guys, I think sometimes we look at these stories and we go, yeah, 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 but like God sovereignly just chose to do some of those things. No, look at the stories. It's because these people chose to put their faith in him. Because yeah. there are a lot of other times when people didn't and it went bad. So you have to pay attention to the fact that Jesus, God, responds to our faith. There's that scripture um, in, the, in the Gospels that talks about our faith moves mountains. It's literally, and it's not just like, oh, that's really nice and figurative. He literally says, like, if you will believe and not doubt, you will be able to pick up this mountain and throw it into the, right? And so it's, we look at this and we go, we have to learn what it means to believe him. Believe him and not doubt. So many of us are out there trying to like move mountains. And I suddenly got hit with this reality this week that our faith, we're not trying to move mountains. We're trying to move the mountain maker. We, we want our faith to be such that God looks at it and goes, yes. And there are examples of this again and again. I'm just going to fly through just a couple of them. But Jesus himself, before he had ever done a miracle on this earth, he said, it's not my time yet. But Mary, his mother, said, Jesus, what did I tell you? <laughs> Jesus literally had just said, it's not my time yet, woman. But then he looks at the father and the father goes, I like her faith. Go do it. <laughs> Right? Come on. That's like, that was the first miracle. That was the first miracle of, of Jesus turning water into wine. He said, I'm not, it's not time. God didn't tell, Father didn't tell me it's time. And mom goes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Think about Moses and the Israel. I mean, there, there were a few times where, where God is like, I am done with these people. Wipe them out. And Moses goes, please don't wipe them out. It makes you look bad. And God's like, all right, Moses. Because he, tr he looks at people's faith. He looks at Mary's faith. He looks at Moses' faith. And he goes, okay, I see what you're doing. I see your faith. And I will choose. The God of the universe chooses. Chooses to be moved by our yes. Amen. When our yes lines up and when we step in and we go, yeah, but I trust you, God. I know you could do that miracle. And he goes, yeah, okay. I wasn't planning on it, but sure. Because you said, because you stepped into faith. He loves our faith, you guys. Like, I think this is hard for some of us, right? Now. Anybody, this is a little hard for you? Mm. It's a, yeah, I get it. But for some reason, this is the way he works. I want to read to you guys, um, we're almost done here, but I want to read to you guys a scripture that honestly really bothers me. You ever get to the scriptures and you're like, God, did you have to put that in there? Can we just skip it? It makes us look bad. <laughs> this is one of those. Mark chapter 7, verse 24, it says, And then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre. He didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in, so that he could, um, but he couldn't keep it a secret. Right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Now, this is a woman, it doesn't describe it very well in here, I mean, it does a little bit later, but she's a Gentile woman. So at the time, Jesus is going and preaching only to the chosen people, the Jews, OK? 
okay? We may or may not like that, but that's what it was. Right away, the woman who heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter. Since she was a Gentile born in Syrian Phoenicia, uh, Phoenicia? Phoenicia, Jesus told her, first, I should feed the children, my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Now, this is one of those things where I'm like, mm, that's super harsh, Jesus. Did you have to call her a dog just because she's not a Jewish person? Like, that feels, hmm. But I asked God about it, and I feel like he gave me a, so we'll get there. She replied, that's true, Lord. But even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed, and the demon was gone. So, yeah, come on. So I was firstly asking Jesus, like, why, why do you have to be so rude? <laughs> and I feel like he said to me, sometimes... He needs to wait for people to move out of offense before he can move. And, and, and I feel like there's a lot of times where Jesus does it. He says some super offensive stuff to see who sticks around. Wow. Like we've talked about it a few times. I used to hate the scripture. I feel like I'm starting to love all the scriptures I used to hate. But the one about where Jesus is like teaching and all these crowds are coming and it's so awesome. And he's like, it says there's like thousands of people following him and listening to him intently. And then he starts to go, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, then you can have no part, no part in me. And they're going, what? And he's like, yeah, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood and they leave. But do you remember what the disciples, he, he, the disciples stay and he's like, are you guys not going to leave too? And he goes, and they, they respond, another good answer. Where would we go? You have the words of life. Wow. Yep. And I think sometimes Jesus waits for the ones who go, "Ugh, that's offensive. I don't like it. And they walk away. They get offended by each other. They get offended by him and they're out. And Jesus is going, who's going to stick past offense? and wait to see what I'll do. And then I love how Jesus says, good answer, and she gets her miracle. Wow. Her faith moves him. You will see as you continue to read through Acts and the rest of the New Testament, very quickly God's like, it's not just, it's not just for the Jewish people. It's not just for the chosen people. It is for all of mankind. Amen. But at that time, Jesus, for whatever reason, was focusing just on the Jews because he was trying to get them out of the old and into the new because he's their Messiah, right? Yeah. And so he's doing that task. That's what he's assigned to. And yet a woman who is outside of that comes and her faith moves him yeah. to where he's like, yeah, go. That was a good answer. Wow. Do we realize that sometimes us choosing to step into faith will actually move God? Us choosing to go, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you will do the things you said you will do. I believe you that as I read through the scriptures and I see these things happen, that you will do it again. That we can actually have faith for our families to be saved, for our city to be transformed, yeah. right? To, to see signs, wonders, miracles, to see people who are struggling and so stuck in their sin and the enemy is coming at them so hard and we can go, you know what? Every promise is fulfilled in Jesus. Yeah. Yes and amen. <laughs> There's three simple things that I just want to tell you guys about that is... When you want to say yes to him, I want to invite you to first pray because you don't want to, you want to pray and figure out, okay, Jesus, what is, what is, what is your will? What are you speaking? What are you saying yes to right now? And then we get to partner with him in that, right? So pray and then trust. Sometimes you guys, life is so hard. Life can be so hard and it can be so unfair. And it's in those moments especially that we just need to step into trust and go, I know who you are. 
I know your heart for me. I know your goodness. And we step into trust. And then the third thing says pray, trust, and then move. Cody and I have a philosophy that we learned from a, a mentor of ours that is that there's always a green light until he makes it red. Yeah. So we just keep moving. We're like, okay, God, let's go. Yeah. We're going to move. And then when he's like, nope, go there. Okay, then we stop. Okay, what are you saying? Turn. Okay, go. Yeah. Right? So many of us are stopped back here waiting for him to yell, throw a hammer down, do something, and we're never going to move because we're waiting for some sort of like booming voice. And he already gave it. Come on. Right. He already gave it. He already did it. And we just need to step out in faith. We need to trust him. We need to believe what he says about us. And we need to move. Come on. I had already, like I said, um, decided to, to give this message about say yes. And I think it was like maybe a few hours later or maybe the next day. I went on my Instagram and just a really small reel, like 30 second whatever, um, of Bill Johnson's sermon. I don't know if it was from last week or when it was, um, but he literally was preaching about say yes. Um, it was a little bit different because he's preaching about the generations to come, but I want to read to you guys just one quote. He said, your decision to say yes here, to guard your heart, to walk in the fear of God, will have an even greater impact on your descendants. Yeah. Why? Because nobody's yes is confined to their own little world. Wow. So Come on. Wow. Nobody's yes is confined to their own little world. You think that that time that you said yes in the quiet is just you? But it actually ripple effects into your friends, your family, your children, your descendants for generations to come. It, it ripple effects into the decisions you make. That yes you said in the quiet goes out. Bill Johnson says the yes shouts. The yes to God was a whisper in the quiet and it shouts in public and it changes and transforms atmospheres. Come on, yeah. right? The yes. Last week we were sharing with you guys um, and Sandy and Philip shared today like some of the complications that we absolutely feel like are God, but there's still complications over at Fermata um, and, and there's a financial need and um, we thought we were really doing great in that department and then suddenly everything <laughs> shut down and somebody came um, to Cody and a, a couple of us and said, you know, I feel like God told me to sell my car and just give all the proceeds to the church. And it's, let me just give a, like, this is not like a person who owns 50 cars. <laughs> like, and I can already feel how her, I mean, it's her yes that she said a few decades ago to Jesus that is, that is having this ripple effect in the rest of her lives. Her kids are going to be blessed for this. This church is going to be blessed for it. The community is going to be blessed for it. Like when people give their yes, it's not just a yes. It, it literally is an amen, so be it. I'm going to take that. And all of us get to look at that and go, that yes, I say amen to. Yeah. Make it mine. Make me the kind of person, God, who no matter what you call me to, and it might look very different for every, it will look very different for every single one of us. Maybe your yes is as simple as, yes, I choose to say I'm all in. Yes, I choose to get baptized today. Yes, I choose to believe you, God. Yes, I choose to give $2. Yes, I choose to say no to that thing or that person because they're not going to be what you call me to, or that thing is not going to produce the fruit that I want to see in my life. Your yes will look very different, and, and you will have to give a million yeses to him, but every single one reverberates into eternity. Our obedience never just affects our lives. Look at, look at the people in this book, like Abraham, Noah, David, like look at how the entire world has been changed by people like that. And then I want you to think also in your own life when people have given a no to God. Maybe when your parents and the impact that it still has on your life because they didn't say, yes, I will treat my child the way you want me to treat them. Yes, I will love 
my child or my sister or my brother. Think about the impact that, that happens when people say no to him. That is why our world's a mess. But then on the flip side, when we say yes to him, and there are times, I'll be honest, where it's too hard for me to say yes for myself. I'm just too tired. I'm like, God, I just, I can't. And then I see my kids, and then I see you guys, and then I see the vision, and then I go, okay, yes. And we need to all step into that together. We need to say yes to wise decisions, to fearless faith, to a pure life. Yes, we're all in. Our faith will bless our lives in this life. Our faith will bless our lives in eternity. We will literally get rewards, which blows my mind, for the things that we say yes to. Our faith will bless generations. Our faith will bless the people around us. Our yes to God will bless God himself. Will you guys stand with me for a second? I'm so aware, like as I was so overcome at the beginning of this message, just looking around the room going, wow, there are so many people who have given a shout of a yes, an all-in yes. And I'm so aware, though, that we all get to continue to say that yes in different ways in, in every day of our lives. And as we go into this time, as we close in worship, I just want you to ask God, what is he asking of you right now? What is the yes that you can give him right now? And I realize, again, that it can be so different for everybody. But I want to encourage you today. It can be scary. But there's something that, that happens with God, with faith, that is so crazy. It's like when we're standing on the edge of the cliff, the yes feels terrifying. But when we actually step out, we suddenly realize that his arms catch us, and it's like the most exhilarating, exciting, still sometimes terrifying, amazing thing that you can ever experience. But it's not until we step out that we actually get to experience it. It's not until we say yes that we actually get to experience it. So Jesus, right now, God, I pray for every single person in this room. God, will you wash away any of my words that were not meant for them? And God, will you just highlight, maybe it's the one, it's the two little things that you're calling each of us to, God. God, I, I pray right now, as your scripture says, every yes, every promise is yes in Jesus. You are the resounding yes, Jesus. And your, and your word also says that you have given the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to say yes to you. And so right now for anybody who's feeling like, man, I feel like God's pushing me to something. I'm, I feel like he's pushing me to say no to the world and yes to him in whatever way. If that is terrifying for you, I want to invite you to step in to the Holy Spirit and allow him to do it with you that you get to partner with the living God to say yes to him. Jesus, I pray that out of this yes, out of today's decision to say yes and to continue to say yes to you, that the world would be transformed. God, I just believe that if every single one of us would take this seriously, that it will literally transform the world. It will literally transform generations. So Jesus, will you give us the strength to be the ones who say yes? That the, the yes in the whisper and the yes in the shout, God, that you would use that. I want to challenge all of you, just even if, even if it's just for the rest of the day, no matter what he calls you to do, you say yes. And then try again tomorrow. <laughs> and see what happens. Jesus, you are so good. for being the one who said yes to us in our mess in our weakness when we don't believe you you continue to say yes to us we love you lord amen amen